Welcome to the War Academy channel. Among all the characters, who were stigmatized during the Second World War, Paulus is undoubtedly one of those who are at the top of the list. These men have been used as scapegoats, and all the blame for certain military actions that ended in disaster has fallen on them. Unfortunately, in the face of very complex events, this form of explanation in which everything is simplified in a person in question, is very common. Today we have a program in which we will not focus on the famous Paulus surrounded with his 6th army in Stalingrad, nor will we analyze his way of acting, because instead, we will expose what exactly Paulus did when during the spring of 1941, visited his friend Rommel in Africa. This visit from Paulus, as well as his participation in the failed assault on Tobruk, or how close he came to taking command of the Africa Corps, is a chapter in his career that goes quite unnoticed, because the focus is always on him when he was in Stalingrad. This story begins shortly after the fall of France, when Paulus becomes Halder's right-hand man, and thus begins to work on plans to invade the Soviet Union. As is evident, that this project was being carried out, it was something that only a group of senior officers belonging to the German High Command knew. Paulus, on the other hand, was a very serious officer, who had distinguished himself in previous campaigns for his organizational skills. In addition, he was a total supporter of the use of large armored formations, with which to make rapid penetrations and isolate and destroy the enemy. The main efforts that Paulus made in this project were to maintain the idea that the Soviet armies had to be defeated in the fastest and most forceful way possible, in order to pounce on Moscow before they had time to recover from the first blow. Otherwise, Paulus foresaw a long war of attrition with the Soviet Union that they could hardly win. Finally, the plan for the invasion of the Soviet Union, presented by the Army General Staff, was signed by Hitler on December 18, 1940. While this operation was being planned, the Italian army began to suffer a series of defeats in North Africa, which forced Germany to send reinforcements to the area. It was then that in early 1941, German troops began to land in Tripoli. As we have already seen in other programs, as soon as Rommel arrived in the area, he went on the attack, obtaining victories, but also putting the Axis forces in a great commitment. As we mentioned at the beginning, Rommel was unaware of the plans that were being made for the campaign against the Soviet Union, and despite having orders to maintain the situation, being able to attack only when he saw a very favorable situation, Rommel went on the offensive with what little I had. Halder, for his part, considered the Mediterranean front as a secondary sector, which in no case could absorb troops that were going to be needed in Russia, but the actions that Rommel had begun to launch endangered his plans. Rommel was famous for not obeying the orders that were assigned to him from above, and being aware of this, Halder did not like being sent to Africa at all, since without a doubt, he preferred any other general who strictly complied with what was ordered. Due to the difficult logistical situation in which Rommel's forces found themselves, and the increasing amount of resources, which he demanded to finish closing the offensives he was starting, Halder almost went to Africa in person to stop Rommel. However, he decided that it would be better if instead of him going, it was Paulus who went, as in addition to being his right-hand man, he was also a personal friend of Rommel's, since in the past both men had served in the same unit. Paulus was a very diplomatic and highly educated man, famous for his poise and impeccable behavior. He also had the admiration and trust of many German officers, and according to what was said in the military academies themselves, he was destined, along with von Manstein, to be one of the best operational generals in the German army. In addition to the task of containing Rommel in Africa, lest he divert resources from the main attack on the Soviet Union, Paulus was also going to address a complaint from many Rommel officers who complained that they were being ordered to make senseless frontal attacks, with the enormous number of casualties that this produced in their ranks. At this point, many may question whether the few forces that Germany had in North Africa could really mean a significant loss of strength for the German army when it came to attacking the Soviet Union. To give a piece of information, just say that Rommel came to have more than 6,000 trucks to be able to supply his three divisions. During Operation Barbarossa, the 190 German divisions had about 33,000 assigned. This leads us to the fact that while each Rommel division needed 1,600 trucks, those that attacked the Soviets would do so with about 170 each. To this also, we must add all the transport to Italy and later by sea to Tripoli. With this in mind, on April 25, 1941, Paulus arrived in North Africa. There he found the Italo-German forces in a rather precarious situation, 
after their offensive through Cyrenaica in which they had finally failed to take their last objectives. Basically, the Germans were stuck in both Tobruk and Solom, at the mercy of different British offensives that would finally end up expelling them from the area momentarily by the end of the year with Operation Crusader. After arriving there, he was able to greet the different commanders and was soaking up how everything was. So much so, that he came to participate in an attack on Tobruk on May 1st, which also ultimately failed because the German units were too weak. During the two and a half weeks that Paulus remained in the area, he was able to repeatedly meet with both Rommel and many of his subordinates. The main message that he conveyed to the Desert Fox is that he should not make any further advance, and he was ordered to remain on the defensive until further orders, keeping that if the Cyrenaica. Perhaps the best asset that Paulus could have used was to tell him directly what was being planned in Operation Barbarossa, but since it was totally confidential information, they had no orders to tell him, and for fear of leaks, Paulus did not say anything about it to Rommel. This led to a very grown Rommel who continued to demand attention, without any idea of what was actually brewing. On May 11th, Paulus sent a telegram to Halder in which he told him the following. The situation in Africa is unsatisfactory. By not fulfilling the order sent, Rommel has created a situation that is no longer in line with our supply possibilities. Finally, Paulus concluded by saying that Rommel was not up to the task. This message that Paulus sent to Halder, is undoubtedly a faithful reflection of the sterile conversations that he was able to have with Rommel during those weeks, in which the Desert Fox did not give his arm to twist at any time. However, although these were the words that Paula said officially in this telegram, they were not the only ones or the kindest, because thanks to the testimony of his son, who wrote his memoirs, we have Rommel's real opinion with the that Paulus arrived at his house. Discussing the matter with his wife, Paulus told her that Rommel was a stubborn man who did not listen to reason, not even to direct orders. That guy acted as if he knew everything himself, better than the rest of the generals put together. And this opinion was formed by Rommel, moreover, without having the slightest idea of the general situation of the war on all its fronts. Nor did Paula see favorably, that Rommel was always surrounded by photographers and journalists, who treated him like a kind of movie star. According to Paulus, this was pure vanity. Despite these criticisms, he considered Rommel to be a very brave and capable officer, although he wondered if he would finally be aware of the difficult situation in which he found himself, and in which he was putting the high command of the army. So that we can finish getting an idea, of the bad image that he took from everything he saw in Africa, he even told his wife that he was seriously considering presenting himself as a substitute, to replace Rommel in command of his forces. In the zone. But after considering that he could do the assigned task in a much more effective way than Rommel was doing, his wife came to tell him that he had not lost anything there, and that the position he was going to have in the future invasion of the Soviet Union, was much more important for his career. Making a small point here, we have to point out that Paulus had informed his wife of the German invasion plans for Russia, which clearly went against the regulations. His wife, on his part, showed her rejection of said operation. And what do you think, what role do you think an Africa Corps led by Paulus and even Manstein, who was also another who was about to be sent there, would have had? Do you consider correct the way in which Paulus has been judged? If you want to expand this information, I leave you in the description the programs that we have carried out on the operations in North Africa, as well as the books that helped us to prepare this program, these being the one on Stalingrad and me, and the ones on Duel in the Desert. And finally, this is the end of the video, Thank you all very much, especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and see you in the next one, see you soon.